1994, General Electric released a locomotive that would completely reshape the American railroad industry. The AC 4400 CW arrived at a moment when railroads desperately needed more power. And within just six years, it helped flip the entire market upside down. This is the story of how one machine ended 50 years of EMD dominance, EMD's half century of dominance. For most of the 20th century, if you saw a freight train rolling across America, chances were extremely high that an EMD locomotive was pulling it. Electromotive diesel had been the king of American railroads since the diesel revolution began. And by the 1950s, they controlled over 60% of the entire market. Their locomotives were everywhere, from the coal fields of Wyoming to the ports of Los Angeles, and railroads trusted them completely. EMD started way back in 1922 as a small company in Cleveland, Ohio, building self-propelled rail cars. General Motors bought them in 1930 and poured massive resources into diesel engine development. The results were incredible. Their 1939 FT demonstrator locomotive toured the country and convinced railroad after railroad to abandon steam power forever. During World War II and the decades that followed, EMD built thousands upon thousands of diesel locomotives that completely transformed American transportation. Their secret was standardization. While competitors like Alco and Baldwin built custom locomotives that were difficult to maintain, EMD focused on reliable interchangeable parts that any railroad mechanic could work on. Models like the GP7, GP9, and especially the legendary SD40-2 became the workhorses of American freight. The SD40-2 alone sold nearly 4,000 units between 1972 and 1986. Railroads loved these machines because they just worked, day after day, year after year. GE slow rise to competition. General Electric had been around even longer than EMD, but for decades they played second fiddle. GE started building locomotives in 1907 and spent years as a supplier of electrical equipment to other manufacturers. They partnered with Alco from 1940 to 1953, providing motors and generators while Alco built the rest. When that partnership ended, GE finally struck out on their own with the Universal Series in 1956. Progress came slowly at first. GE's Dash 7 Series in the 1970s struggled to compete with EMD's dominance. The Dash 8 Series in the 1980s showed improvement, and by 1987, something remarkable happened. GE's market share actually passed EMD's for the first time. Their four-stroke engines burned less fuel than EMD's two-stroke engines, and their microprocessor controls gave railroads better diagnostic information. The gap was closing fast, but the real revolution was still coming. The AC Traction Revolution. Here's where things get technical, and this technology is the entire reason GE won this battle. Traditional diesel locomotives use DC traction motors, which work fine but have serious limitations. When wheels slip on the rail, DC motors struggle to recover quickly. This matters enormously when you're trying to pull 10,000 tons of coal up a mountain grade. Railroads had to use multiple locomotives working together just to get enough grip on the rails. AC traction motors changed everything. These motors could deliver massive amounts of torque at low speeds without losing their grip. They recovered from wheel slip almost instantly. A single AC locomotive could do the work that previously required two or even three DC units. The math was simple and devastating for railroad accountants. Fewer locomotives meant fewer crews, less fuel, and lower maintenance costs. EMD gets there first. EMD actually got there first. They worked with Siemens to develop AC traction technology and released the SD60 Mac for testing in 1991 and 1992. Burlington Northern tested these 4,000 horsepower machines on their coal trains in the Powder River Basin. The results were stunning. Three SD60 Max could replace five of the older SD40-2 locomotives. Burlington Northern was so impressed, they ordered 350 of the improved SD70 Mac in 1993, later expanding that order to 450 units. The SD70 Mac was a genuine breakthrough. It used a 710 G3 engine producing up to 4,300 horsepower, with Siemens AC traction motors controlled by per-truck inverters. This meant that each set of wheels on a truck shared the same electrical signal. The locomotive achieved adhesion coefficients of up to 0.45 on dry rails, which is engineering speak for incredible grip. These machines entered service in December 1993 
and immediately prove their worth hauling massive coal trains? GE's answer, the AC4400CW. So, EMD was first, they pioneered the technology, they proved it worked, they had the orders rolling in, everything looked perfect for them to dominate the next generation of American railroading, then GE showed up with something better. The AC4400CW went through testing in 1983 and entered full production in 1994. On paper, the specifications looked similar to the SD70 Mac. The GE machine produced 4,400 horsepower from its 7F DL16 four-stroke engine. It weighed between 420,000 and 426,000 pounds. Maximum speed was 70 to 75 miles per hour. Nothing revolutionary there. The technical edge. The difference was in the details of the electrical system. While EMD used per-truck inverters that controlled groups of motors together, GE used per-axle inverters with GTO thyristors. Each individual motor got its own control signal. This might sound like a minor technical distinction, but it made an enormous practical difference on the rails. When one wheel started to slip, the GE system could instantly reduce power to just that one motor while keeping full power on the other five. The EMD system had to reduce power to an entire truck, meaning three motors at once. GE's approach delivered smoother acceleration, better grip in marginal conditions, and less wear on the wheels and rails. The numbers told the story. The AC4400CW produced 166,000 pounds of continuous tractive effort at speeds from zero to 11 miles per hour. Starting tractive effort reached 180,000 pounds, these figures nearly doubled what the older DC locomotives could achieve, which explains why railroads were so eager to switch. Fuel efficiency improved by 8 to 12% compared to similar horsepower DC units. Railroads reported 40% reductions in wheel wear after switching to AC power, which translated directly into lower maintenance bills and less track damage. CSX ordered 25 AC 4400 CWs in 1994, specifically for coal service in the Appalachian Mountains. Testing showed that one AC4400CW could replace the two SD40-2 locomotives on grades of 1.8%. The savings were immediate and substantial. One crew instead of two. One locomotive to maintain instead of two. One set of fuel stops instead of two. Railroad executives started making phone calls to GE. Railroads vote with their wallets. Canadian Pacific placed an order for 133 units in 1995 switching their loyalty away from EMD after decades of buying primarily from that company. These locomotives handled grain trains that previously needed three SD40-2s with just two AC4400CWs. The savings on crew costs alone justified the purchase, and fuel efficiency improvements made the economics even better. Union Pacific went even bigger, ordering over 1,000 AC4400CWs from 1994 onward and standardizing their entire coal fleet around GE's AC technology. After Burlington Northern merged with Santa Fe in 1995, the new BNSF Railroad ordered over 1,000 AC units for their coal and grain operations across the western United States. Canadian National added 320 between 1996 and 1999. Norfolk Southern bought 200 in 1999 for their Appalachian coal operations. The market was collapsing around EMD. Their share dropped from 70% in the early 1990s to just 30% by the year 2000. GE had completely flipped the industry, now controlling roughly 70% of new locomotive sales. The SD70 Mac continued selling, eventually surpassing 1,500 units built through 2007, but it could never catch up to GE's momentum. Railroad purchasing departments were making 20-year decisions about their motive power fleets, and those decisions increasingly favored GE. Once a railroad committed to AC 4400 CWs for their heavy haul operations, they tended to standardize on GE equipment for parts availability and crew training. Each order GE captured made the next order more likely. EMD's failed response. EMD tried to respond with the SD90 Mac in 1998. This was supposed to be their knockout punch, a 6300 horsepower monster powered by the new 265H engine. On paper, it looked incredible offering more power than anything else on the market. In reality, it was a disaster. 
The 265H engine suffered constant reliability problems that plagued railroads from the moment they took delivery. Cracked cylinder liners, turbocharger failures, and electronic control issues kept these locomotives in the shop when they should have been earning money on the main line. Railroads that bought SD90 Max found themselves dealing with breakdowns and expensive repairs that ate into any supposed efficiency gains. Some units spent more time in the shop than on the rails. Union Pacific and other buyers grew increasingly frustrated. The locomotive that was supposed to save EMD instead damaged their reputation at precisely the wrong moment. The Engine War The engineering differences between the two companies went deeper than just the AC systems. GE's 7FDL engine was a proven four-stroke design that burned fuel more efficiently than EMD's two-stroke 710 series. Four-stroke engines complete their power cycle in four piston movements rather than two, which generally means better fuel economy and lower emissions. The trade-off is that four-stroke engines are typically heavier and more complex, but GE had decades of experience making them work reliably in locomotive applications. EMD's two-stroke engines had served them well for decades, producing excellent power-to-weight ratios, but environmental regulations were getting stricter and efficiency was becoming more important to cost-conscious railroads. Crews weigh in. Railroad forums from this era captured the debate between crews who operated both types. Some preferred the SD70 Max steering trucks, which helped the locomotive navigate curves more smoothly and reduced wear on the rails through tight mountain passes. Others pointed out that the AC4400 CW's components were cheaper to replace, even if the engine didn't last quite as long between overhauls. The GE locomotives used modular diagnostic systems that made troubleshooting faster for maintenance crews. Most operators agreed that both locomotives pulled incredibly well, but the GE seemed to have an edge in raw tractive effort at low speeds where it mattered most for starting heavy trains and climbing grades. Ownership changes. The financial pressure eventually became too much. In 2005, General Motors sold EMD to a consortium of Greenbrier Equity Group and Berkshire Partners. Then in 2010, Caterpillar's Progress Rail Division bought EMD for $820 million. The company that had dominated American railroads for over half a century was now a subsidiary of an equipment manufacturer. Emissions and Evolution GE continued pushing forward. They introduced the ES44AC with the new GVO12 engine to meet EPA Tier 2 emission standards in 2011 and 2012. This engine represented years of development focused specifically on reducing nitrogen oxide and particulate emissions while maintaining the power output railroads demanded. EMD responded with the SD70ACE, which used IGBT inverters that were more advanced than the older GTO technology. Both companies had to adapt to Tier 4 emissions rules starting in 2015, which forced EMD to finally develop a new four-stroke engine called the 1010J. The SD70 ACE-T4 used this engine and produced 4,600 horsepower while meeting the strictest environmental standards. These regulations essentially ended EMD's reliance on their traditional two-stroke design that had powered locomotives since the 1930s. In 2019, GE Transportation merged with Wabtec Corporation in a deal valued at $11.1 billion. The locomotive giant that had dethroned EMD was now part of an even larger rail technology company. Today, Wabtec maintains roughly 70% of the Northern American locomotive market while Progress Rail, the EMD successor, holds about 30% and focuses increasingly on export markets and rebuilding older units. Global Impact The ripple effects of this transformation extended far beyond North America. AC traction technology spread globally based on designs pioneered by both companies. Australia's BHP uses SD70 ACE locomotives for iron ore trains. Brazil operates ES43 BBI units. India builds WDG-4 locomotives based on American technology. China developed the HXN3 using similar principles. The competition between GE and EMD in the 1990s essentially created the template for modern freight locomotives worldwide. Why GE won? Looking back, several factors combined to give GE their victory. Their per-axle inverter system genuinely performed better than EMD's per-truck approach in most operating conditions. Their four-stroke engines proved more fuel-efficient as diesel prices rose. Their manufacturing scale allowed them to fulfill enormous orders quickly, while EMD struggled with capacity. Most importantly, 
they arrived at the right moment when railroads were desperate to cut costs and improve efficiency. EMD had every advantage going in the 1990s. They were the established leader with decades of customer loyalty. They actually pioneered AC traction in North American freight service with the SD70 Mac. They should have owned this transition. Instead, GE executed better, delivered more units faster, and captured the orders that locked railroads into their ecosystem for the next 20 years. The future of locomotives. The locomotive industry continues evolving today. Both Wabtec and Progress Rail are testing battery electric and hybrid technologies for the next generation of freight power. GE actually built a hybrid diesel electric prototype back in 2007 and tested a battery electric locomotive with BNSF in California in 2020. Environmental regulations keep getting stricter, pushing manufacturers toward cleaner solutions. The days of pure diesel locomotives may eventually end entirely, replaced by batteries, hydrogen fuel cells, or technologies we've not yet invented. Whatever comes next, the companies building those future locomotives will still be shaped by what happened in the 1990s when AC traction arrived. The 1994 introduction of the AC 4400CW marked the moment when everything changed. GE took a technology that EMD pioneered and implemented it better, marketed it smarter, and produced it faster. Within six years, 50 years of market dominance had completely reversed. The American railroad industry would never be the same, and every coal train, grain train, and intermodal stack train rolling across the country today carries the legacy of that transformation. The story of GE and EMD reminds us how quickly industrial giants can fall when competitors execute better on emerging technology. EMD built the foundation of American diesel railroading. They created locomotives that defined freight transportation for generations. They even saw the future of AC traction before anyone else and proved it could work. All that history meant nothing when GE showed up with a slightly better mousetrap and the manufacturing capacity to flood the market. Today, you can still see both companies' locomotives working side-by-side -side on American railroads. SD70 Max continue hauling coal alongside AC 4400 CWs and their successors. Some railroads actually prefer certain EMD models for specific routes where their characteristics work better. The rivalry never truly ended. It just shifted to a new balance where GE sits on top and EMD fights for the remaining share. Those massive orange and yellow GE locomotives you see pulling trains through your town exist because of decisions made three decades ago. Railroad executives looked at the numbers, saw what AC traction could do for their bottom line, and placed their orders accordingly. The technology spoke for itself and the market followed. That is how empires end and new ones begin, one purchase order at a time.